Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us, sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. In Germany on Friday, I saw a report. Uh, the Supreme Court in Germany daughter. She it was her second time before the court, and uh, it had to do. She wanted to be part of the of the thing. The court finally turned her down and voted in favor of the music director who could decide um, who sings in the choir and who, and who doesn't. And her response was, it isn't fair. Obviously, and she was set first when it was in herself. It wasn't fair. Life is difficult. Some of you may remember M. Scott Peck in there. M. Scott Peck. He was a psychiatrist and uh, uh, probably a, quite a well-known. Uh, self-help person back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Least resistance or something. Road Less Traveled, right. And he began the book, The Road Less Traveled, with the business that life is difficult. The theme of that book is that only when we are able to engage and embrace the difficulty of life do we ever grow. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally, do we grow? We must embrace it. I don't think there's any question that life is difficult now, far beyond what the, the gal wants to join the boys choir. I can't think of a from Hong Kong. Is unbelievably difficult. And there are many times, I must say, in my semi-retired, I'm semi-retired, in case you think, I think the brother really is retired, but uh, he's, 
in my semi-retired state, I say to myself, I don't need this anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of listening to, uh, come on in, come on in. So, um, I'm tired of listening to all of this stuff. I don't know whether you've, but I've stopped watching the news. Um, but the business that life is difficult and embracing it, I can appreciate, come on, have a seat here. Right, this guy right here is the former senior warden, he's friendly, more or less. About this lesson today with Jesus. I mean, doesn't it seem strange to you? David was just saying, man, that's a strange lesson. We've been, we've been talking about a friendly Jesus. Uh, last week, one of my favorite lessons uh, with Jesus, he says, uh, uh, it is my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. G gift, yours. Don't have to work for it. It's yours. Done. Signed, sealed, done. And earlier on, he talked to Martha and Mary a couple of weeks ago and said, just stay here and listen to the words. And, and we've had lessons about his kindness and his healing and all the rest of it. And you say to yourself, what the dickens happened here? What is it about this? I think on this day, for whatever reason and whatever set it off, Jesus embraced the sheer horror and difficulty of life. Just like we do. I don't know how many times we can watch uh, people be killed or what, it doesn't matter. All the horrors, but sooner or later you say, enough, enough. Well, in the, the story we've had with Jesus, he's been on the path and uh, he began Luke's gospel a long time ago, it seems like. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and announced that I should give good news to the poor and the suffering and, you know, bring healing and to the relief to the... You know, it's a kind of good news story and you look forward and from here on in, it's basically been good news kinds of stuff. This past... Uh, Early in August was the celebration of the Transfiguration. Not that anybody knows or whatever, but in case you happen to see it on TV and somebody asks you, oh yeah, it was a feast. But it has to do with the sense that all of a sudden Jesus wanted desperately for his disciples to know who and whose he was and who they were. You may remember that he, they came up to the mountain, the, the three main figures, Peter, James, went up to the mountain and all of a sudden Jesus changed and radiant and, 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 and they're just overwhelmed and all of a sudden out of a cloud you hear God's voice saying, this is my son, listen to him. And they on the mountain in the past few weeks is, even one of the one of the times on the week, two of them were fighting over who was going to be his his chiefs of the, in the group. I mean, it's just stupid, but you know, human. And I think all of a sudden, Jesus to himself said, "Enough. Enough." Do you think I've come to bring? Do you think I came to bring all sorts of lovely little nice thoughts for life that you just sort of can wander through that I can give you some sort of guru thing that you can be? Do you think that's what I'm here for? Because later on, and as Luke writes this, he writes this for a congregation just like us, but a congregation facing incredible horror. And he will see father against son and, and all. He will, they will see it because they will be dying for it. And so the issue has to do with, this isn't something that leaves me in some sort of nirvana land. This is a thing where life is real. 
where life is absolutely knocking on my door, where all of a sudden that life says to me, take account of what's going on. So, in the midst of this journey, he turns to the disciples and he turns in incredibly strong words. Here has not said those words. You know, do you think I've come to bring peace? Nah. I came to bring division because I need you to pay attention. And then he says to him, he says, you guys know what the weather looks like. Take a look out there. And you can decide when it's going to rain or when it's going to be this or when it's going to be this. You can, just, you can check that out. Can you not see it? Can you not see it? I I need people to follow me. I need people with a strong realization of what the dickens is going on in this world. I think about this place a long time ago. You know, we talked about this history thing. The folks here, when they kicked that guy out, did it at the, at the threat to their own lives. You know that, don't you? This was at the threat to their own lives. This is where the revolution began, right here, right here. And they did it at the, because they looked around. Got to be on. This was not, well, was it the sermon lovely today? No, this had more to do. I think about here. Last week, a little thing for the, you know, put a box in a plate. Two hundred dollars you did. Well, not quite two hundred. I added just a little, but a little, little, to make it even. Oh, I want to be honest, but. But you gave almost 200 bucks. And next week, you know what's next uh, in September, you know, we're going we're gonna to ask you to give money to Edmark. I mean, you know what that is? It's hospice for children. And we're going to do that every month. Because it's about our role as disciples. If we can look around, it's going to be us who have to make the decision. It's going to be us who's all of a sudden saying, take a look out there. Somebody needs to stand up and do something. And who better than us? I guess he must have scared, scared them. I'm sure he did. And sometimes, uh, have, have we not scared our children? I, I mean, let's... And we do it, what? Because we're nasty? No, because we love them. We love them. And because God so loves us, he would like us to pay attention. Because in this world it is going haywire, and it is, I don't think you have to look too far to figure that out. God is going to depend on us to make a statement that befits us as disciples of the Lord Jesus. And that's what this is about. Believe me, I would, uh, I would much prefer, let's go back and talk about last week, because I, I do believe that's the truth. <laughs> God gives us the gift of the kingdom. We're on our way home, and that's just true. But he also says to me, Bob, you may look retired. You may feel like retired. But every now and again, I'd like you to get up and do something. You know what I mean? And I think that's the call. You think I've come to bring peace? Not at all. Bring division where people take seriously what it means to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Not a bad call. Amen.